Visit grizzly.com for dust collection machines and accessories. So why not put all those jigs and fixtures and shop upgrades that you've been making to use and build a wine hutch? This one that I'm gonna be making is gonna have plenty of space for glassware, and it's also gonna have plenty of space for wine bottles underneath. So I hope you'll join me as I build this thing over the next few videos. Eventually in woodworking, you're gonna to need to learn how to make legs. And it doesn't matter if you're making a side table, a dresser, a bookcase, um, you're eventually gonna to need to know how to do this task. And I usually get my legs from a much wider plank of wood and I'll either rip them all out at the bandsaw or I'll use a table saw. And the very first thing I do when getting my legs, roughing my legs out of a wider board, is I'll flatten one edge of the joiner and then I'll take it over either to the table saw or the band saw and I'll use that nice flat edge as a reference. I should point out that at this stage with the joiner, after edge joining this edge, I'm really not concerned with getting this edge perfectly square to one of the faces. I really just want this edge to be nice and flat so that I have a nice reference to use on the table saw rip fence. Now we need to rip these legs to rough width. And I'm gonna do that at the table saw. But you could do this at the bandsaw if you were really concerned about the amount of material you have. Because remember at the table saw, we're gonna lose about an eighth of an inch at a full curved blade. But uh, I should be okay for the amount of stock that I have. And I set the width of the leg to be the thickness of the board because there's really no need to go any wider when I rip these to rough width because these legs are gonna be square, so. Let's go. Until I start ripping off some of these legs, this blank is gonna be pretty heavy. And to help me support some of the weight at the front of the table saw, I'm gonna use a roller stand. The next step in my process for getting legs ready for a project is to, after ripping, flatten one face and then square one adjoining face at the joiner. Now I can reference this freshly flattened face up against the fence of the joiner and I can flatten and square one adjoining face. Now that I have two flat faces and they are square to each other from the joiner, I can plane the opposite faces to their final thickness. And I'm gonna do that by placing the face jointed sides down on the bed of the planer. I like to make an arrow that's pointing towards the face that was jointed at the joiner. That way I don't accidentally plane the wrong face at the planer. So you always want to plane the opposite face that was jointed at the joiner.
Now that I have all the rail stock to mention the thickness, I'm gonna square and flatten one edge and then rip everything to its final width. Before I go any further, I'm gonna make the loose tenant stock and I'm gonna get those from some scrap resaw on cherry. I need to next make the grooves in the post to receive the panels, and I'm gonna do that using my plunge router and a quarter inch spiral bit. In order to make the grooves and the rails to receive the panels, I'm gonna use my stack dado set at the table saw. At the bandsaw, I resawed a bunch of five quarter maple for the panels for the wine hutch. And the next thing I'm gonna do now is plane all of the pieces to thickness before I glue them together. I decided that after the planer, I'd go ahead and give these panel sections a few passes through the drum sander. I'm gonna stop part one here, and next time I'll pick up with the glue up of the panels. And if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you like what I'm doing here at Garage Woodworks, I hope you'll consider showing Garage Woodworks a little bit of love by becoming a Patreon supporter. And you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below and also in the first comment. I'll see you all next time. Be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate store where you'll find a lot of the tools that I use in my shop. You'll also find a brief description of the tool and what I think of it. You'll find a link to my Amazon store in the description of the video.